Hi there, discrete math students, how are you? This is another little video. Um, the last video that I did for you guys um, showed you how to use Racket, the Racket programming language to solve some problems in chapter two. This time, let's talk a little bit about chapter four and then maybe, you know, later on this week, I'll make a video covering some of the problems in chapter three and you know we're gonna bounce around a little bit okay so let's see <clears throat> i'm looking at this problem here problem 104 it's a caesar cipher problem and let me ex first i'm going to show you the functions that i wrote and then i'll talk about how they work and why they work Okay, and I'm not going to go into extreme detail. I'm not going to go into extreme detail. If you want to flesh out the details, you're going to have to do some studying and research on your own. But I'm just going to introduce you to some of the basic points so that you'll sort of understand what's going on. So I have a message here. It's do not pass go. Do not pass go. And I have to shift the letters by three places. Okay, so for example, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So if I shift the D over by three places, D gets changed into a, a G. Let me make sure I said that correctly. So if I shift the D over by three places, D gets changed into E, and then E gets changed into F, and F gets changed into G, which means D gets changed into G, okay? And the reason you need modulo 26 is because if you're not using this, you're, you're going to fall off the end of the alphabet. So, for example, you know, you've got A, B, C, and all of these letters in the middle and then you have X, Y, Z. Well, what happens if you shift Z over two places? Where do you go? There's nowhere to go. You're just going to fall off the end of the uppercase alphabet. So what basically happens is because of mod 26, you end up actually cycling back to the very beginning of the alphabet. So if I shift Z over by three places, Z gets changed into, you know, the letter Z gets changed into the letter A, and then B, and finally C. So basically, the alphabet gets wrapped around itself like a snake biting its own tail. And that's, that's the whole concept of this. This is called a Caesar cipher because Julius Caesar actually did use this, <clears throat> he did use this type of encryption to send secret messages to soldiers, generals, officers in his armies. So the, this particular encryption method is named after Julius Caesar. Uh, I'm not sure if he's the one who invented it, but it's named after him. Okay, so um, let me show you. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, let's go over to my Python directory and IPython and uh, let's see from Caesar cipher import everything okay so the function that I want which is a function that I wrote, um, it's called encrypt. Okay, it's the encryption function. Okay, encrypt, do not pass go. And we're gonna shift everything over three places. So we can see here that the encrypted message is GR, of course, a space. The space isn't changed. Only, you know, the letters of the alphabet are changed. 
QRWSDVVJR. Okay, so let's see. Um, okay. <clears throat> One second here. So let's see. Um, well, we know it can't be the first one. That's GP. Uh, let's see. It's not the second one. QRWSDVVJR. You know what? It's going to be this one. And that is correct. Okay, that is correct. So how is this actually working? How are my functions working? So I'm using, in, in Python it's called a generator, and a generator is basically, um, it's like a lazy list, okay? Python generators, Python generators, Python generators, one second. Hold on. <laughs> okay, Python generators perform what's called lazy evaluation, which means that the contents of the generator the contents of the generator are not completely evaluated at once. They are evaluated, the contents are evaluated only as they are called upon, only as they are needed. So here's, here's a simple example. What if I want to create a generator that will forever give me the numbers between 20 and 30? So I want something, um, I want to write a Python generator that will give me the numbers from 20 to 30 over and over and over and over and over again. <coughs> so let's work on this particular problem, okay? So how would I start? 20 to 30. Oops, 20 to 30, define, oop, def, okay. And my function won't take any arguments. I don't think any arguments are needed here. Okay. And for this particular thing, so I'm gonna start, you know, I'm always gonna have 20. 20 is like my base case. 20 is what I'm starting with. But think about it. I've got 20 plus 0 and 20 plus 1 and then 20 plus 2 and then 20 plus 3 and so on and so forth until finally I have 20 plus 10 and that gives me 30 but then I just start over again with 20 plus zero. So how am I going to simulate that behavior in a computer function? Okay, well these numbers, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, you know, and back to zero, you're always going to get those numbers when you apply a positive number to mod 11. Any positive number mod 11 is going to give you either 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 or 7 or 8 or 9 or 10. <coughs> Any positive number mod 11 is going to give you an integer between 0 and 11 exclusive of 11, not including 11, so from 0 to 10, including 0 and including 10, but not including 11, okay? 
So for example, uh, let's see, how do I want to start this? Let's start with zero while true. So this is an infinite loop while true. Actually, let's make this negative one to start with. Okay. Mm, while true. Okay, so the start variable is incremented by one. So now it's going to be zero. Right? And then yield 20 plus start mod 11. Okay, and let's see if that works. So let's see, what should I call it? I'm going to call it gen for generator, or I could just call it generator 20 to 30. Next generator, 20. Next generator, 21. Next generator, 22. Next generator, 23. Next generator, 24. Next generator, 25. Next generator, 26. Next generator, 27. Next generator, 28. Next generator, 29. Next generator, 30. Next generator, 20. And we just cycle back to 20 and then the whole process begins all over again. Next generator 21 next generator 22 next generator 23 etc etc <clears throat> and so this is how i can produce an infinite sequence an infinite list where i keep getting the integer values 20 to 30 and they're they are repeated over and over and over again now the thing is you have to remember that in all computer programming languages not only python c c plus plus java python ruby uh perl javascript uh Haskell, OCaml, F Sharp, Racket, Mathematica, MATLAB, Maple. It doesn't matter which programming language we're talking about. In all programming languages, the letters of the English alphabet are actually represented as integers. They are they are internally, they are internally represented as integers. They are represented as integers inside the memory of the computer. So for example, okay, um, the character that corresponds to the integer 97 is the lowercase letter a. The character that corresponds to um, the character that corresponds to the integer 90 is the capital letter Z. So really, the computer, <clears throat> excuse me, the computer takes the letters of the alphabet. The computer takes the letters of a text message and internally converts them into numbers so that, you know, because the numbers are easier to manipulate than the raw text. The numbers are easier to manipulate than the raw text, okay, the raw characters. So the characters are converted into numbers and then eventually they are converted back into characters, okay? 
So this is really at the heart of what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to email my functions to you. You can look at what I did. You can use them to, you know, solve some problems. Obviously, guys, you cannot do a Caesar Cipher project for one of your programming projects because I've already done it for you. You can do a variation of it. You can do something that a little bit different. You could also do, um, for one of your programming projects, feel free to implement the RSA algorithm, which is also part of chapter four. Or you could do a variation of the Caesar cipher, but you cannot do the Caesar cipher itself because I have already done that for you. And sorry guys, you cannot just copy my code. That's not acceptable. That's You have to submit original work, okay? So what if I wanna generate this list? How am I gonna generate it? Well, okay, so define 20 to 30 list. K is an integer number, okay? Here I'm gonna to have to create my generator. Uh, what did I call it here? I could call a generator here too. Generator is equal to 20 to 30. 20 to 30. And then return a next generator for, I'm just gonna use um, that underscore. The underscore is a, it's like a wildcard variable. Um, it just, um, the underscore means I don't really care about the variable. It's sort of a throwaway, it, it's a throwaway variable. I mean, I could use X, I could use Y, I could use Z, but traditionally, if you're gonna name a variable, if you're going to name a variable that you don't plan to use again, traditionally, you know, people, programmers like to use the underscore. I mean, you could use A, you could use B, you could use C, you could use X, you could use Y, you could use Z. You could use any variable name that you wanna use, but traditionally, if you're naming a variable that you don't plan to use ever again, um, you know, the, the traditional choice, the traditional choice among programmers, especially functional programmers, is the underscore, which is sometimes called the wild card, okay? So in range, oh, here, you know what we do? Yeah, yeah, in range K. Um, yes, okay, in range K. So 20 to 30 list. Oh, let's see. How about I want the first 100 elements, the first 10 elements, or the first 11. I want the first 11 elements of that stream or infinite list. Sometimes an infinite list, guys, in computer science is called a stream. A stream is another name for an infinite list, or you could just call it an infinite list or an infinite sequence, okay? But some people call it a stream. A stream is an infinite list or an infinite sequence, okay? And that's what that looks like. Here, let me turn off pretty printing. <coughs> Mm, 20 to 30 lists. Okay, let's, um, let's, let's take the first 110, uh, the first 110 numbers of that sequence. Okay, so here you can see 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, et cetera, et cetera. And then it just goes back to 20, 21, 22, 23, et cetera, et cetera. So um, the number, this number K does not have to be a multiple of 11. 20 to 30 list, 59. 
okay, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, et cetera, et cetera, up to 30 and then back to 20 and then, you know, up to 30 and back to 20 and then up to 30, back to 20, up to 30 again and then back, um, back to 20 and then, you know, up to 30 and then 20, 21, 22 and 23. It ends at 23. Okay, so this is really the heart. This is at the heart of the code that I wrote in order to solve these Caesar cipher problems. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do another one of these problems. Um, Here, this one, no, let's just skip this, because I, I don't. Okay, this is the same type of thing, but now the shift is different. The shift is different. We have a shift of 13. Um, same idea, guys, encrypt, do not pass go, 13. So here, guys, we can see the shift is 13. QB, ABG, oh, let's see. It's not the first one. You know what, I think it's the second one, there we go. <coughs> Okay, so this is this is the encrypted form of do not pass go. Do not pass go. Okay. And then we can decrypt it. A B G C N F F T B. I can decrypt the encrypted message. And if I decrypt the encrypted message, then I go back to the first message, the original message that I started with, okay? Which leads me to the next type of problem. All right, one, whoops, wait a minute. That's not quite what I want. Okay, here we go. We we have a message here and we're supposed to decrypt it and we you know, we don't know the original message. This is the encrypted form of some message and we're supposed to figure out that message. Okay, so this right over here is the encrypted form of some type of message. And it's our job to figure out what that message is. So what I would do, well, let's copy and paste. Let's copy and paste. So message is equal to, so message is equal to this, okay. And then we're going to say for I in range from zero to 26. So this is gonna be range 27, from zero to 26, okay? For I in range 27, and range 27 includes all the integers from zero to 26. This doesn't have to be I. This could be any letter that you want it to be. It could be Q. It could be Q, it could be whatever you want it to be, okay? Um, print decrypt message q oh little little mistake there um the q sorry about that q 
Q should be right over here. Okay. <laughs> because that's my that's my shift. <clears throat> okay, so what I have to do now is go through this list and I have to figure out what actually what is recognizable as an English phrase or sentence? Is there anything here that is recognizable as an English phrase or sentence? And it looks like this is it. Blue jeans. That's it. This is recognizable as a real English phrase or sentence. So the answer is going to be blue jeans. The answer is blue jeans. Okay. Now the important thing to remember is this. Do you, so you guys remember this function that I wrote and it just keeps cycling, you know, uh, it keeps cycling the integers from 20 to 30 over and over again. So here, you know, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And then we just cycle back to 20 and the whole, you know, this, the whole cycle just repeats over and over again. The important thing to remember is this. Lowercase letters, <coughs> lowercase, okay, let me, let me repeat this very slowly and very carefully. Lowercase letters in the English alphabet are represented by the integers from 97 to 122. These numbers represent the, the these numbers represent the letters of the lowercase English alphabet. The letters of the uppercase English alphabet are represented by these numbers. 65 to 90. And that's easy to prove. That's easy to prove. So uh, here I have a list, range 65 to 91. <coughs> okay. There we go. And... map uh, the character function list there we go so I actually converted these integers into characters Um, what about the, the integers from 97 to 122? Same thing. So really, um, if you combine this information right over here, okay, with what I did over here, you will be able to generate, you know, these infinite alphabetic lists, which you can then use to figure out how to shift, you know, how to do a, a Caesar cipher shift of one letter to another letter without falling off the end of the alphabet. Okay, so um, that's pretty much it, guys. The code, <coughs> the code that I wrote, um, so it actually, Caesar, oops, Caesar cipher dot pi. Okay, so let me um, there we go. So here we go. It's just three functions. It's actually three functions. Um, I have my alphabet generator. I have my encrypt function or encryption function. 
And then I have my decrypt function, which is right over here. So this is, this is my alphabet generator function, right? This is my encrypt function. And this is my decrypt function. And everything here in this source code, everything here in this, oh, wait a second, what did I just do? Um, nice. Wait one moment. Um, hold on a second. Okay, so what is, oh, no wonder I'm having, wait a minute. <laughs> now I see what the problem is. Okay, I need to turn this off. Quit. Okay. I... Good, no changes need to be saved. Wait, no changes need to be saved, that's good. And there we go, okay. So um, every function that I wrote here, here, let me do that one more time. <laughs> every function that I wrote here, I have three functions here. The alphabet generator function, the encrypt function, and the decrypt function. Every function that I wrote in this source file is ultimately based upon material that we just covered in this tutorial video, okay? Everything in my source code, it's, it's really built upon information that I just presented to you in this video lecture. But it's your responsibility, <clears throat> excuse me, it's your responsibility to fill in the details for yourself. You know, I can hold your hand only up to a certain point. The rest is up to you, especially, uh, especially guys, when you consider that this really is an asynchronous online course. With asynchronous online learning, students have to really work independently. That's very important. That's a little bit different in a synchronous course, you know, where where we where we would have, you know, uh, virtual lectures in real time, um, and obviously it's very different with traditional face-to-face -face instruction. Okay, but with asynchronous online learning, you know, students have to study independently. They have to work independently. I can provide some assistance, but really most of the work is on you. Most of the work is on you, okay? And that's just how these courses, that's how these courses are set up, you know? All right, guys, I think this video has gotten long enough. Um, let's see, yeah, 33 minutes. I don't wanna make a super long video. Let's, let's keep these videos reasonably short and hopefully you learned a lot. And yes, everything I showed you can be done in Mathematica. Everything that I showed you today can be done in Racket. You can do it in Python, you can do it in Mathematica, you can do it in Racket. You can do this in almost any programming language, okay? Um, so yeah, I showed you one way of solving this problem using the Python language, but you could do the same thing in Mathematica, you could do the same thing in Racket, in Java, C, C++, R, Ruby, JavaScript, you know, uh, C Sharp, F Sharp, whatever language you want to use, okay? As long as you know how to use the language. Haskell, Haskell is a fun language, definitely one of my favorite programming languages. In fact, maybe my favorite programming language. Okay, guys, that's enough for today, and we will communicate um, very soon, okay? Have a great week, and study hard. Bye for now.